Hey guys, I've got a really, really important lesson on end games for you. If you're a beginner or an improving player and you don't, uh, you haven't yet learned about the uh, concept of opposition in the end game, then you need to watch this. So I've got a uh, rapid game that I've just played. It's a 10 minute game. Uh, both of us around 1500. And we'll go through the game quite quickly, although it's pretty exciting. It's one of these Vienna games that I've been playing recently with uh, knight to c3 on the second move, which uh, is kind of surprising. So my opponent plays knight to f6, and that means I can play the Vienna gambit, but he declines the gambit and plays one of the best responses, d6. Um, I now play my knight out to f3. Uh, so we've got four knights out, and now I bring my bishop out to pin. And so does he. Then I castle short, and taking advantage of this slight advanced f pawn, which probably isn't going to survive very long, um, but that should give me a semi open file at some point soon. Bishop's kicked, and now I capture the knight, doubling black's pawns. Now I capture again in the middle of the board with my f pawn, so now I do have this semi open file down the f file. Um, push d3, allowing my bishop to come out into the game and also adding another defender for that pawn on e4. Now bishop comes out defending the pawn, which is undefended. I could have actually, no I couldn't have captured that because it would have dropped the queen. So there we go. Um, now I decide that this knight here, because of the position of this pawn, this knight doesn't have much of a future. So I'm now planning to maneuver it round to the other side of the board. Um, bring my bishop out, pinning the knight. Bishop's kicked. Rook across. Just defend. And now this is slight inaccuracy, I think, from black, because I wanted to put my bishop here all along, adding a second attacker to this pawn on e5. It's only defended once. So does black notice that? Yes. And takes out one of my attackers. I recapture with the rook. I want to keep pressure on this knight here. And the knight comes round to attack the bishop. That's fine by me. Captures, and I capture with the knight. I figure that this knight has got a couple of very nice squares here. And now there's a check. Just move out of check. So material's equal at this point, but the attacking is, is all coming from me. Uh, bishop hits the rook. Rook moves across and um, doubles up with its buddy. And now f6. Now, knight to h5, now adding a third attacker to this pawn. Uh, the pawn can't advance because I could just grab it with the rook or even with a pawn. Um, the king can't support the pawn as a another defender because if it goes here, I just capture the pawn with a rook. Um, likewise, if the king can't go here because it would be in check. So the pawn must fall. So I grab the pawn with a knight and now king comes to here and then knight back to h5 with check and king goes back to g8. Now, now I decide to try and capitalize on my advantage. I can occupy the f6 square um, hitting the rook and the queen. Rook takes, rook takes, no, no, okay, knight takes here. Now I've got to be very careful because my king is in the corner here with two pawns there. Got to watch out for back rank attacks, okay? So, uh, yeah, so the knight captures with check. King moves away, and now I just press up. I want to pressurize this bishop. It can't use this diagonal, so it's gonna have to retreat back along here. Um, but this this was a almost a terrible blunder. I think the computer did call it a blunder, because what I've done here is I've left my knight in line with my rook, Right, and all black needs to do is add a second attacker to that knight. Now I can't move this knight. I can't move it anywhere because if rook takes rook, it's checkmate, surprise back rank mate. So that knight is stuck there and I can't get another defender to it. I can't put my queen here on f2 because the bishop's guarding it. Can't put my queen here because of two pawns. So that was unfortunate, but I did realize at least as a um, consolation that I have just attacked black's bishop, so I grab the bishop, black grabs the rook, the knight, we exchange rooks, and now we're going towards an ending. 
So now black um, captures the remaining hanging pawn. And if you look at the board now, we've got six pawns each and a queen. All right, my pawns are in three pairs, like that. Uh, black has a pair, kind of a three, but doubled and a sing singleton. Now, to me, that says that I have the better pawn structure. Um, because the, these pawns, this front pawn is only going to get in the way of this one. Right, so the, for these pawns to advance up the board is not very, um, very likely. It's not going to be very effective. Okay, so I'm figuring that I've got just the slight edge, and that's enough in an ending. Now my opponent is 1500 rated, so I need to pay him some respect. So I move my queen to e2. And now my queen's quite comfortable because it's guarding all of the, these pawns are all now protected and the king's the only protector of h2. So now pushes one pawn and I push a pawn and the king starts to move up and my king starts to move up, right? This is the point where the kings need to start to take part in the proceedings. So fairly quiet, we're tiptoeing around each other. Now we've got this kind of standoff here where if any pawn were to advance, the, the opposite pawn could advance and create a lock, which doesn't concern me too much. But now I play queen to f3, so now I'm offering a trade of queens. Now I, I think black shouldn't accept this trade, but he does go ahead and accept it. Now we've got a situation. What I want to do is I want to get my king through here, okay, so that I can start attacking these loose loose pawns i'm assuming that these pawns can always lock gridlock each other at some point however i can't get through at this point because this pawn is covering that square so what am i going to do am i going to have to push e5 so the black's king moves across to f6 and now i can't push e5 because the king will just take it so i have to push a pawn and now I think is, yeah, so black exchanges, and this does give me a square that I can move forward into. Black's king doesn't allow me to move forward into that square, so I just step sideways. Now black's king moves backwards, and this was the point where I, I knew that the game was won, right? Because it allows me to play this move, okay? And this is the point of the video. This arrangement when you've got two kings like that is known as opposition and now it's desirable to have opposition um, when so what it means is that the kings are on the same rank or same file and they are two squares apart all right there's one square between them so this is opposition so i have just moved into opposition with black's king and if you think about it the Kings are protecting every square that they are directly in contact with. So this king now cannot move forwards. Can I do that in red? Yeah, he cannot move forwards. Okay, so he can only move sideways or backwards. Now, what this means is that this, this king can never approach my king for as long as we maintain, as long as I maintain opposition. He can move sideways. And then I do nothing, I just push my pawn forward. Now he comes back here, and now, king to f5, we have opposition again. And again, this king cannot advance. All right? that, this isn't opposition, right? Because they're not on the same uh, file. This is opposition. So now the king moves to here, and now I simply move my pawn forward again. So the king now can't go here or here. So where does he go? Pushes the final pawn. Now, what you have to do at this point is to say, okay, well, what options has he got other than moving? So if he advances this pawn, I just capture it, and then these pawns are stuck, right? If he advances this pawn, I've got a4, and again, we gridlock the pawns. So what I do now is I move my king to e5, and again, we have opposition, although there's a pawn in the way. But if you look at it, what this means now is, this king can't go there or there or there or there, right? So the only way this king can move now is backwards. Now, if there were if there was nothing else on the board, 
this would probably be a draw, it should be a draw, because we'd end up in this exact same situation with my pawn and my king one square further forward, his king on the back rank, and that would be stalemate, but right now it isn't. So now he tries to push one of his pawns, and I play a4 gridlock. So what has he got now? Right? All he's got left is c4. I capture. Now he pushes a pawn. Not a problem. I just move my king. And here... There's no way now that he can stop my queen from com sorry my pawn from coming through and promoting. So I come through with check. He can't block because of my king. So he has to move away. And now I promote to a queen with check. He's only got 20 seconds on the clock, but I still need to be very careful because all of his pawns are actually blocked now. The only piece that can move is his king. And if I stalemate his king, then I lose a guaranteed victory. Okay, so now we are entering the uh, checkmate pattern. King and queen against king. So I put my queen here. King can't go to either of these squares, so he has to come back into the board. Right, he's only got one square. So now my queen is a knight's move away from the king. So I want to maintain that. So I move my king in. Now his king moves again. And now I move my queen so that it is a knight's move away from the king. And he does have a square that he can go to. So he goes there. I come here with check. Moves backwards. Move my king in. And now he's only got one square he can go to there and that's a nice neat checkmate so you really 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 have to remember let's go back this um this pattern of opposition right so as soon as he went there i smiled now the the engine doesn't say that this is a, a blunder but um i think it had me already plus seven at this point even though the material on the board is equal it's got white at plus seven so opposition king moves Bide my time. Obviously, I can't come here with opposition because the pawn's covering it, right? So just move a pawn. King moves back. Opposition. King moves there. Move my pawn. Okay, and now we have some dilly dallying, and then move. Just move my king, and then we're through. Okay. So remember that tactic, but it only works when you step into the uh, the pattern of opposition. If it's your opponent moves, uh, your opponent's move, and he gets opposition right then that works against you it means that your king is prevented from going forwards right so you want to be the one that achieves that structure okay so there you go very 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 useful um very important lesson a lot of beginners don't don't know this kind of theory um but if you know it it really can help make the difference between winning an end game or losing it or drawing so there you go please commit this to memory it will serve you very well. Thank you for watching. If you haven't subscribed to Chess Bootcamp, please do. And uh, other than that, thank you for your attention and I'll see you soon.